Welcome learners to another episode of Philippine History and Government. Today's lesson is all about the Spanish period or the arrival of Spaniards here in the Philippines. In this video, we are going to talk about the birth of Filipino nationalism and propaganda movement. Propaganda movement is a peaceful crusade or campaign reforms and it was organized and participated by the Ilustrados, such as Dr. Jose Rizal, Marcelo H. Del Pilar, and Graciano Lopez Jaina. They are the leaders of the said propaganda movement. The movement began in 1872 when fathers Mariano Gomez, Jose Burgos, Jacinto Zamora were executed at the Luneta. The Filipino exiles of 1872 and many patriotic students abroad met in Hong Kong, Singapore, Barcelona, Madrid, Paris, London, and other foreign cities. One of their aims is to promote the welfare and happiness of the motherland. Aggressively but peacefully, by means of writing and speeches, they crusaded for reforms to rectify the evils of the Spanish colonial system. These are the reforms desired by the propaganda movement. Number one, equality of the Filipinos and Spaniards before the laws. Number two, assimilation of the Philippines as a regular province of Spain. They called for the assimilation of the Philippines as a province of Spain so that the same laws will be applied in the Philippines and that the inhabitants of the Philippines will experience the same civil liberties and rights as that of a Spanish citizen. Number three, restoration of the Philippine representation in the Spanish Cortes. So it has something to do with political. The Philippines was allowed representation to the Spanish Cortes. Now, representatives, however, were mostly Spaniards who worked for their own interests in the colony. Representation was later unstopped. This deprivation became one of the complaints of the propagandists who were seeking for reforms from Spain. Another thing is the Filipinization of the Philippine parishes and expulsion of the friars. Human rights for Filipinos such as freedom of speech, freedom of the press, and freedom to meet and petition for redress of grievances. The propagandists were patriots who waged their movement by means of pen and tongue to expose the defects of a Spanish rule in the Philippines and the urgency of reforms to remedy them. Uh, in other terms, they were the scions of good families who are very highly intelligent, educated, patriotic, and courageous, who symbolize the flower of Filipino manhood. We have Marcelo H. Del Pilar as a member of the propaganda movement. He is a lawyer and a journalist, beloved by masses for his eloquent Tagalog and fearless defense of the poor against prior abuses. In 1882, Del Pilar founded the newspaper Diaryong Tagalog to propagate democratic liberal ideas among the farmers and peasants. He is known by his pen name, Larry Del, who was a Filipino writer, lawyer, journalist, and Freemason. Another member of propaganda movement, we have our national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal. Rizal was a polymath skilled in both science and the arts. He painted, sketched, and made sculptures and wood carving. He was a prolific poet, essayist, and novelist whose most famous works were his two novels, Nolimitang Hire and its sequel, El Filibusterismo. Now, Rizal became a leader of the reformist movement called Propaganda, an unwavering campaign for the political and social freedoms, lobbying the peninsular government, using their connections with the liberal Spanish politicians. He used the pen names Laong Laan and Dimasalang in many of his writings. We also have Graciano Lopez Haina. Graciano Lopez Haina was a Filipino journalist, orator, reformist, and national hero who is well known for his newspaper La Solidaridad, the greatest orator of the propaganda movement. In 1888, Filipino expatriate journalist Graciano Lopez Haina founded the newspaper La Solidaridad in Barcelona. 
And throughout its course, La Solidaridad urged reforms in both religion and government in the Philippines. And it served as the voice of what became known as the Propaganda Movement. And under the pen name Taga Ilog, he wrote articles for the reformist periodical La Solidaridad, which criticized the friars and abusive government officials and aspired for changes in the colony. Also, we have Mariano Ponce as member of the Propaganda Movement. He was a Filipino physician, writer, and active member of the Propaganda Movement. In Spain, he was among the founders of La Solidaridad and Asociación Hispano-Filipino. He was also a medical student and biographical writer. He was the co-founder of La Solidaridad with fellow co-founder Graciano Lopez Jaina. Now, Ponce was also the head of the literary section of the Asociación Hispano-Filipina, created to aid the propaganda movement where he served as a secretary. He wrote about travel, politics, and history under the pseudonyms Kalipulako, Naning, and Tikbalang. We have other propagandists, Juan Luna, Felix Hidalgo, Pedro Paterno, Antonio Luna, Pedro Serrano Lactao, Jose Maria Panganiban, Fernando Canon, Jose Alejandrino, Isabelo de los Reyes, and Dominador Gomez. So way back then, foreigners who were lovers of freedom and justice supported their campaign, which is the propaganda movement. Another group who fight for freedom and equality is what we call the Katipunan Revolution of 1896. The revolution began in 1896 and really ended only in 1901. At first, it was independence against the Spain. But it turns out that they had a misunderstanding between the other group, members of the revolution. After the discovery of the Katipunan, Bonifacio gathered his men in the hills of Balintawak. August 26, 1896, the fiery Bonifacio stopped all the talking. There is no other way. Enough is enough, he told them. What are the causes of the revolution? The abuses of Spanish officials and priests, persecution of the Filipino leaders who defended the rights of their fellow countrymen, Filipinos desire to regain their independence, and the discovery of the Kapitipunan and Bonifacio's call for revolution. Now let's talk about the discovery of the Katipunan. It has something to do with Father Mariano Hill, who was the parish curate of Tondo, Manila. He was one of the friars who had earlier warned the Spanish civil authorities about the existence of a secret society, and he immediately rushed to the headquarters of the Manila police. Next, the cry of Pugadlawin, originally the term cry, referred to the first clash between the Katipuneros and the civil guards or Guardia Civil. The cry could also refer to the tearing up of the community tax certificates or cedulas personales in defiance of their allegiance to Spain. It was also the beginning of the Philippine Revolution against Spanish rule. And this event which happened on August 23 is known as the cry of Pugadlawin. It symbolized the determination of the Filipinos to fight for independence even unto death. Aside from the propaganda movement and Katipunan, we do also have another group, which is the Pact of Biak na Bato. Emilio Aguinaldo established his headquarters in Biak na Bato in the province of Bulacan. In July 1897, Aguinaldo established the Biaknabato Republic and issued a proclamation stating the following demands. Expulsion of the friars and the return of the friar lands to the Filipinos, representation in the Spanish Cortes, freedom of the press and of religion, abolition of the government's power to banish Filipino, and equality for all. If we're going to um, connect their aims or their goals, Actually, they have the same aim, they have the same goal, which is to have equality for all and at the same time, the freedom of the press. 
Biyak na ba to Constitution? Constitution based on the Cuban Constitution, drafted by Felix Ferrer and Isabelo Artacho, signed on November 1, 1897. And the Constitution provided the Supreme Council Emilio Aguinaldo as their president and Mariano Trias as their vice president. Thanks for watching. See you in my next one. Please like, leave a comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button for more lessons to learn. Bye!